Now, what is up, everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and this is part one of the CWDC Elseworlds crossover event. This is pretty epic, I'm not gonna lie. Even though I've had my complaints, my fair share of complaints about these shows as of late, for some reason the crossovers usually always let me have fun. And this time, so far, we, we have gotten a lot of fun. I enjoyed this part one episode. It, I guess, technically was a Flash episode, even though it's on Sunday for Supergirl's night. The beginning, we see this same scene that we've seen like four or five times now of Earth-90 being destroyed by this dude that I, I don't know, I'm not familiar with. Then we see him arrive on Earth, uh, I guess, a Earth, and he gives this book of power to this guy, this dude, and tells him, hey, you can do whatever you want with it. Why? I don't know. I'm sure we have a lot more to find out when it comes to that, though. So I guess whatever this guy did with the book, it created an anomaly. It created this huge shift in reality where Stephen Amell wakes up as Barry Allen. So he's not Oliver Queen anymore. He's aware that he's supposed to be Oliver Queen. Now, I love the fact that they didn't just switch bodies, which is something that you've seen a thousand times. The whole body switching, Freaky Friday, they even referenced it, which it's fine in its own place. But I like the fact that we got to see the actor, Stephen Amell, playing Barry Allen. We got to see him thrust in a situation where he's married to Iris in those awkward interactions. Him having to go to Star Labs and deal with Cisco and Caitlin and Sherlock Wells. So you're seeing that. I think Stephen Amell played it very well. I like seeing him out of his comfort zone. He plays Green Arrow and, and the darkness that that show sometimes has great he's great for that but to see him out of his element with some comic relief he's still serious but everything else around him is more goofier so i like that i like how he played off of that and and then you see grant gustin as oliver queen and he was more fanboying out over it which i enjoyed because if you think about it green arrow was a hero before the Flash. So Barry Allen did look up to Green Arrow. Even in his first episode, he has a pep talk from Oliver. And, and so, yes, he looks up to Green Arrow. So the idea to him of being Green Arrow was awesome at first until he realized that Iris was in love with Stephen Amell. And seeing that interaction, like at first I was going along with it saying, okay, what are we going to do with this switch what fun can we have with it it wasn't until iris was kind of all over Stephen amell and and she was like you know i only have eyes for you barry but she's looking at oliver and and the real barry grant gustin is getting pissed off about it. he's going nuts and Stephen amell's like hey i don't what do you want me to do here that was some of the funniest stuff. Like I laughed pretty hard at that. And that's when I, I knew, all right, we're going to have fun. We're going to go for a ride. But the two of them quickly realized, because they got thrown into prison, <laughs> at least Star Labs prison, which I've always wondered, like, how can they do this? <laughs> Star Labs and The Flash and all of them have their own prison where they put evil evil metahumans there and they treat it like a jail cell with a uh, complete with toilet and all and it's like that's not legal <laughs> i know it's been talked to death before but i guess we're just supposed to accept that they can do that in any event they break out they convince iris that maybe something is up so she lets them go they go to earth 38 to find supergirl because if she can know that something's up, then she can help them. And I 
freaked out, guys. And I know fans of the show probably freaked out as well. Of course, I'm talking about Smallville when they start to play Somebody Save Me. I know I'm not, I, I don't do the song justice, but for anyone who watched that show, kind of grew up with that show like I did. My teenage years was all of Smallville. I freaked out. I said, holy crap, you saw the Kent Farm. You're hearing the music. I'm just saying to myself, is Tom Welling about to show up here? Holy crap. Finally, we're going to see him fully formed as Superman because the finale of Smallville never quite gave us that. Let's be honest. And then, no, you see that it's actually the Superman of Supergirl's world, which I should have put together. I should have known that was going to happen because Earth 38 is Supergirl's Earth. But the music got me. I got swept up. I got sucked in and I thought we were going to get it. Was I a little disappointed? Hell yeah! I was disappointed. I thought we were going to see Tom Willing. I thought we were going to see Erica Durant as Lois Lane. But no, we have our Tyler Hoechlin as Superman, which I do like him. I do. Very much so. I think he's great. He has a niceness, a warmness about him. So I, I fully buy it. It's just, guys, you can't give me that song and then not deliver on it. But the Lois Lane, this actress, I like as well as Lois. I mean, if we can do a spinoff of a Superman show with those two as the lead, I'm all for it. I just don't know if CW is willing to go with it. So they're interacting. They decide to go back to Earth-1 because Amazo, this robot that can take powers or copy powers of metahumans and use it to try to destroy them, they face off against this thing. And that was pretty cool. That whole battle, that fight of these top superheroes for of your biggest superheroes from CW, Superman included. They're going at it with this robot. When the robot does get all of their powers, it's nearly unstoppable. You do have a section of uh, Amazo and Flash running through the city and then they run to this uh, construction site area and they're doing, it's, it's obviously CGI and I'll admit it looked a little PlayStationary, maybe PlayStation 3. And I'm kind of giving it credit. So, no, it didn't look great. I'll be honest. It did not look all that great. But still, I kind of admired their ambition. I admired CW trying to go for it, trying to give us an epic feel to this battle and this fight. And I did somewhat feel that. You see all of them hold it down and then the arrow and they blow it up and they defeat it. So that's all well and good. And then... You see Cisco show them the vibe of this guy. I don't know his name. I'm sure comic book heads who know the deep, deep level stuff will probably know his name. The black dude who is all powerful. Let me know if you know that this guy's name. But when Oliver drew the picture and you see Wayne Tower in the background and he said, we have to go to Gotham City. I think I said out loud, holy crap, <laughs> in that same tone, uh, I know it's Bat uh, Batwoman. I know Batwoman. We saw her on, on the roof of the building, so I know that's what we're heading towards. I've seen the commercials. I've seen the clips. I know it's Ruby Rose, so I'm looking forward to seeing her kick ass, and I fully believe she's going to do just that, but... I have to admit that there's a huge part of me that would love for Batman to show up. It won't happen, but just the idea of it, just them saying we're going to Gotham City. Finally, after how many years? Seven years of Arrow, and we're just now, after many name drops and references, we're finally going to Gotham City. I cannot wait for tomorrow's episode. So guys, obviously, I was able to just geek out for an hour i was able to just have fun go along for the ride i think that's what these crossovers should really all be about let me know in the comments below what did you think of part one of elseworlds did you like it as well what did you think of seeing these characters uh, swap what do you th expect to see next uh, like comment subscribe 
later. Oh yeah, yeah. today I feel super.